Hey, this is Tim at Tiki Boom Design. Okay, in this video, we're gonna show you how to build these full screen background image sections in Webflow. We're gonna show you how to do it so that you can lazy load them and give you tons of flexibility options. This video is part of a series that we did on how to build this one page website for an AMA meetup about Webflow. <laughs> All right, let's get started in the designer. You're gonna be met with a white canvas. We're gonna go ahead and activate Navigator. And we're gonna target all bodies. We're gonna go ahead and style the body. This will be our main background. We're gonna input the color from the design. We're gonna name it and save it into our global color palette. That's super cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and stack some texture on top of it. Webflow allows that. You can stack gradients and images on top of each other. Pretty cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and build out the structure for this uh, full screen image. So we're gonna set up the inner wrapper div and we're gonna go ahead and say 100% wide and 100 viewport height. So that means that that section will be as big as the browser window. We're gonna go ahead and set it to relative. So that way this next div that we're gonna set up, we're gonna set it to absolute. And because it will be absolute in a relative container, it'll stay within that container. We're gonna pin it up to the corner and say 100% wide and 100% high. That means it will be as wide and high as this inner wrapper div section. As you notice, we also set the Z index to zero. Think of Z index as layers in Illustrator or Photoshop. That means it'll be on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and set up this image module to be background magic image. We're gonna load an image in it. And we're gonna go ahead and say, please be 100% wide and 100% high. That means it'll span as big as this background image div. And then say cover. That's pretty powerful and it allows us a lot of flexibility. So now what we can do is when the background image wrapper, we can go ahead and apply some padding to that. And now you can see it creates that frame that's in the design. We go ahead and set the opacity and round the corners and we're done. Okay, let's go ahead and recap what we just did. And I also wanna go over some of the benefits of building this way. So first we started with targeting our body class and we gave it this color and this texture. Then what we said was, okay, cool. Let's make a main container div and that will hold all of our content. Then we created a section wrapper div. This section wrapper div, we're saying, all right, we want this section wrapper to be 100 viewport height tall and 100% wide. And then we applied the relative to this section wrapper div. The reason we did that is we're basically saying anything that is absolute positioned in the section wrapper div will stay within the section wrapper div, which is essential to building out this full bleed image section. Then we created a background image section div, which is absolute positioned. And we say, okay, we want you to be 100% wide and 100% tall. And we're gonna go ahead and pin it up in the corner and we're gonna give it a Z index of zero. Again, think about Z index as layers in Photoshop or Illustrator. We wanna put this at zero so that it sits behind the content. And then when we finally do get to building out the content, we're gonna give those Z indexes of one. So it sits above this background image. Let's hop into this background image section. What we do is we throw in an image module within this background image section div and we tell the image module to be 100% wide and 100% high and be cover. Then what we do is we apply padding within the background image section, giving us flexibility to create that frame-like uh, effect in the design. Okay, let's quickly go over the benefits here. So the benefits are, the obvious one is that by it, using an image module, we have the ability to lazy load images. And we're also able to now use WebP images as well. The huge advantage to this is you could use a little bit higher quality imagery for these full bleed, uh, full screen images and sections. 
and be able to get away with it and not affect page load too bad by doing lazy loading. You wouldn't be able to do lazy load if you were to do sort of the conventional method, which is have a background image within a div or as part of the div. So by using the image module, it gives us the extra flexibility. The other thing is, is that we can literally take this whole setup that we did and copy and paste it anywhere else in the site that we need to. So let's say, you know, for this particular design, we have six sections. Well, essentially all you have to do is build out this one section once, uh, go ahead and do your mobile and tablet, and then go ahead and copy and paste it, and you can swap out the background images. You wouldn't be able to do that if you did a background image as part of the div, because Webflow doesn't allow for you to have different background images per class. And then finally, some benefits here is for animation. So this background image section div, depending on where you pin it within the uh, main uh, inner section, you'll be able to animate in. So what I mean by that is if this background image section div is pinned to the upper left, you might be able to animate the uh, image module to slide from left to right. Or if you uh, pin it to the bottom, you could slide it from the bottom to the top. So just a couple options there. So by building this way, while it might be a couple extra steps than just doing a background image on a div, this allows you tons of flexibility and lazy loading. So I hope this has been helpful and have fun building. Hey, this kitty wants you to like this video, mm, subscribe, get notifications. Just do what the kitty wants. Bye.